We're live. We Whoa, are. Geez, that was quick. Look at that. People in chat already. Woohoo! I think we've got it. I think we've officially got stalkers. Whole two people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, what are we talking about today? Um, I had this crazy idea, a bit of speculation, and these guys probably think I'm nuts. But what we're going to talk about today is the hole in the hammerhead. Is there anything behind it? And what do we know about the ship? I guess a bit more detailed as well. Uh, we've got some images, things that we found out through looking at images um, and stuff like that. So we want you guys to join in with us. We're going to see how crazy this can get. W what are some of the things we can come up with and just out, out of the park ideas and just, just see if we can kind of nail home what this could possibly be. This is rampant speculation. Um, so don't take any of this to be real. This is just us playing with what could maybe daydreams type of thing so at the same time there's a fair bit of um speculative um investigative journalism here you know we are yeah. actually looking at stuff um so you know but the, the, the hole in the hammerhead is the great enigma of why is this hole mm. there it's you know it's a big pandora's box uh, is cig really stupid enough to uh put um what should have been uh, a function before form ship and just decided oh the hole is really cool let's put it in <laughs> or is there actually a a reason behind the hole yes that's that's so, pretty much so does the hammerhead need to go to the dentist that's a question <laughs> or, or, or has it already been to the dentist and you know that's uh had a, had a tooth pulled uh, <laughs> where, where's the, where it... the bit that they pulled out go you know or does it need a filling yeah that's right so um Sorry. So we've got some pretty graphics today as well. Hayes has been really kind of clever, I think, and got some stuff working. So we're going to be switching, and the chat will get small at some periods, but that's because so, so we can show some stuff off. Uh, so if, if we lose you, we'll get you back. So we might have to flick between normal chat and back every so often. So it's a little bit of work around today. So everyone can kind of we'll see what happens. What do you, mean so, you want to start with? Um, Actually, I want to start out with the one with the three ships docked at the uh, at the kind of stationy thing. Because I'm going to start out with how this happened. So Juju uh, is a member of our community, and he kind of came to me and said, "Hey, I think this is a, a uh, there's a you know the thing at the top of the ship. Um, there's these three panels, and we'll talk talk. Actually, can you flip to that image real quick? The the yellow hammery head one. Uh, is it this one you're talking about? Uh, yeah, that one. So if you can see there at the front in the middle of the hammerhead, you can see that there's these three kind of panels stacked on top of each other. And he thought it might be a docking ring. Um, but what it actually, well, through looking at different stuff, so we're going to the docking ring first, I guess, is it's actually, the docking ring is directly at the front. So if you actually look on that image there, you can see where he's, uh, he's moving his cursor there. That's actually what we've considered to be the docking ring. And there's multiple reasons behind that. So if you want to go back to the other image, Hayes, uh, okay. that we're at previously. The Starbase one. Starbase. Yeah, so this is the one that Juju brought to me. And basically, one of the big tells here is if you actually look along the space station, you can actually see the inverse or the mirrored hole of where that would connect to along the space station. So you can see what, near the windows there, there's a couple of ones that are not docked with. Um, but the real telltale sign is if you look at the... This is going to be hard because Hayes is going to switch between a couple of images here, so I'll see if we can keep up. In the eco-skeleton image from the... Um, What's this it one? called? The P yeah, that one from the PDF. What's this from? The um, this the brochure. Is from the, That's the what brochure, brochure, the PDF. Yeah. yeah. So if you look at the front hallway there, uh, so basically between the the two turrets at the front, you've got this uh, hammery. Oh, what do they call it? The suspension slash. Like they call uh, in the around the verse episode. I can't remember what they called it. But they've got yeah. that area, and you've got this room here at the front that doesn't really provide. It doesn't. It's not, yeah, you don't know really what it is. But when you look at this other image from the concept sale, which is the soldiers one, Hayes, if you can switch to that. But that image does look so much like an airlock at Osa. And you can see the sign up, up on the roof that says airlock, and you can clearly see they're in the same room of the ship there. You can see the, the different suspensions things on either side of the room, and all the Marines are focusing at the airlock. So that, from the deduction, most likely is the airlock. You can also Again. see, hey, you can also see execute bizarre someone with a gun actually sticking out from that airlock area. Yes. So they're can. actually fighting at that point. So, so we're assuming that that that's kind of where a bit of the boarding might take place. So this ship, you know, 
again, if you look at it from the other side, there's very clearly a circle there. The circle's on the space station. So putting all this together, that we're, we're considering that that is the airlock, so to speak, for this ship. And it um, looks like that little room is literally one of those airlocks, similar to Olisay in over venting, you know, even looks like double, it's got a little double controls doored. on the side. You have a double door yeah. entrance. So, yeah. Um, Denny BH asked, how long have we been on? Uh, we've been on probably less than five minutes, mate. Very, very, you've got in early. Um, so we haven't been here very long. Um, yeah, so that's that's what me and Juju worked <laughs> out on our own. And then I said to Juju, I was like, well, I, I want to talk about the hole. So we and him started talking about the hole. And that's how this whole shows came about because I started talking from that with Juju. And then it moved on to, I started talking with Hayes and Algrid and we've had little uh, back and forths and stuff like that. And I was like, well, let's get the community involved and see what they think. And that's kind of where we're up to today. So um, I, I just want to do some rampant speculation. The hole's where this started and the airlock, sorry, is where this started and the hole. But I just want to do some, what do we think of the ship? Uh, everything from, there's little things that we'll go over today, like the engine room, uh, where's the kitchen? Where's the bathroom? Things like that. Because this, the, this ship, uh, in the laws, and Algrid will probably be better at law than I will, but it says that this is a long-range uh, ship that's meant to go out for weeks at a time. But I can't see a few of the different things in the ship. Normally um, that you'd want a, a galley and, you know, extra a yeah. rec room or something else. And this, this ship is very devoid of some very simple small rooms house. that are in at smaller ships. It it's is very Spartan, but... But it is also a very old old ship so you know the law has it as you know several hundred years old and it reminds me of a, several a uh, submarine or versions. a mariner vessel yeah you could say that it's very spartan like a submarine but it's yeah yeah 100 meters hmm. yeah. you know so it's it's an old ship it's gone through various uh iterations so the top turret at one point was a was a sense edition they took it off to give it more cover um <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wonder if that's an option you can put back on. That's kind of interesting. So I think that was uh, version one in the in the pamphlet, and then it came off. I think version two or flight two. I think they called it. so flight two or three. That turret came off, and the t sensor dish came off, and the turret went in. Yeah. Um, so Reminds we get Bedjack three D before he goes off the screen. He says, "I've got a theory. There's also a door dash airlock on either side of the two struts." Um, thinking strategic, could one strut be used to let the enemy through in a boarding situation, which could then be vented and allow friendly troops to get behind them by using the other strut? Hmm. I think he's talking about the eco-skeleton image. It does look like there's kind of two doors on either side. Do you want me to change? Uh, yeah, change. Zoom in and have a look if you're still zoomed in. So you, uh, that that front way? room. Mm. He's talking about the very front room where we're calling the airlock. If you actually look, it kind of looks like there's doors on the what would be the top of the image there and the bottom of the yep. image, not directly towards the front of the ship. But I think they're more like little windows or just bars. See, that's how it looks more like a bar, almost like it's an elevator shaft of some description. Yep. I'm not too sure. Yeah, but those look like um, airlocks to me. Well, yeah, but he's that, talking about to the top. See that top square thing on the top of the room? Um, it looks almost like a window. No, 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 down, 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 down. down. Move the mouse and I'll just yep. That's gonna it's not gonna work. Go back. It is that room. It's in the room. Oh, okay. It's just at the top on the on the top. So what would be the north wall? See that square on the north wall? Mm. Oh yes, yep. yes, yep. Like a yeah, door. that. That yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. what he's talking about. But mm. to me that looks more like a just a metal bar frame that's like the side of an elevator or something. It looks more like a control panel or something or Yeah. yeah. Well I think the control it, panels on the other side, but it, if it's the airlock, who knows what it is? It yeah, I'd, be... I would agree. I would agree with you, Algrid. That does look like a control panel—the one that's facing us. It almost looks like it's got two monitors that are yep. up on the roof, um, type of thing. So yeah. But I, I think I think that is the boarding the boarding uh, main entrance where it clicks up to the station, where the hammerhead once it's disabled a ship locks on and boards. If you go to that picture, right at the front, where you've actually got these four little boxes on the side of where it looks like you've got the airlock. What colour is the image? Is it the blue one? I think it might be the blue one. It's a yeah. front front on view. With a, with a ship, the ship slightly below the ship, that one? Uh, yeah, you can see it on that one. You've got yeah. the, the square where the airlock is and you've got these four. Can you zoom in on that one at all? Yeah. Right up to the front. Right up, right up, right up. Right up on the front. In, you can Because you can actually make out things like caution signs and stuff like that on that little... Just on the what would be the uh, entryway. And then scroll down to where, yeah. you, oh, down to where you got would have the entryway. Technically, you got to scroll up. But anyway. 
Sorry. It's all good. Yeah, you're so, yeah, so you can see where the entranceway is, and yeah. then those four squares on the side, they, are they grappled? Are they yeah, crack the You can also see a hinge. See see how there's like a, a hinge in the middle of it, and you can actually yep. make out each hinge on the left. There's actually um, the little hinges, so it actually looks like that plate fault. No, 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 no. Actually, see where the it, uh, plate? You mean here? In, in the center plate, there's a hinge on the... Oh, right there. It, no, no, no. See where no. the line is in between the two? Yeah. The line that would cut the thing in half. Yeah. There, that's a hinge. Oh, the that, hinges. Yeah, the, yeah, the hinge there, yeah, hinge there, right, hinge yeah. there, and hinge there. Um, so it looks like, and then there's obviously looks like there's two hinges at the bottom. So the whole thing kind of falls open like a door type of thing into the airlock of the other place. Kind of makes it a bit like a drawbridge, I guess. Um, I would, oh, yeah, I'd imagine it'd have to be coming in rather than out because when you're locked up. If their if their airlock's closed, you've kind of got to force it, and I'm yeah. not sure how you would do that if it's folding out. You're not going to get back flush up against them. It'd have to come on and collapse back on itself though, like that. So if it's like this, because it's currently that, it'd yeah. actually have to fall down, and then that'd have to drop over like that, or this would have to pop in yeah. and then drop down like that. Yeah, that I don't think that would work, unfortunately. I agree, it's too complicated. Well, what, um, but even opening out, it's going to give you problems to, to link up, because then you've got the, the sides are open as well. So, how, they, how they'll how do it, I don't know, but I actually think, yeah, that that's the airlock. Yeah. So. Well, a boarding-based airlock of some sort, yeah. Um, Mario asked about wish he had Snake's opinion. Well, we wanted to get Snake on here, but he's... Missing in action. <laughs> He's so actually he might... rebuilding his computer, so... He's... Yeah, so hopefully it'll be bigger and better when he comes back soon. Um, but, um, yeah, well, if you've got any questions for Snake, we'll pass them under him if you want. Um, should we move on to the hole, then? Okay. Now we've kind of gone, gone over that. Which image? Um, the one from above where it's shooting the caterpillar below, if you've got that one. Yeah. That one. Now, what what started this with me is if you zoom in on that front section at the middle of the the hammer, so the very front part. Uh, yeah. That, no. Yep. Now, what when I look at this, see how there's two white rails on the left and right hand side of those two parts? That made me start to think that it was a sliding mechanism. And if you look at the shapes, it looks like there's three shapes piled on top of each other. And then if you look at the next section along into the hole, they seem to fit into those three six three sections, sliding all the way along to the turret that's in the middle of the ship. So I'm actually I can actually envision that sliding through and um, closing the gap, so to speak. Um, now, my first instinct was that it's just there to cover the windows, possibly. Again, it could not slide at all. It might not close at all. Um, but there are other things that make me think it closes as well. Um, there's a 3D model haze. Do you want to switch to that real quick? And that'll show some people. Um, if you look at it below, there's actually flaps below. Okay. So this is a 3D model in a browser. Uh, this is taken from the um, the website. What's it? Uh, what do they call it? Holoviewer. Holoviewer. So this is a Holoviewer model uh, put into a 3D browser plugin called uh, what's the place called? Sketchfab. Mm -hmm. I believe you can look it up on there if you're interested in finding this. Um, yeah, but from below. There is very clearly on that hole two yep. flaps. Yeah, one would come in and cover there, and or maybe this one would. Yeah, they're definitely designed as separate movable bits. There, they're not meant to. They look like that's what they do. Yeah. But I, the flaps I'm actually talking about are the two from the bottom. Can you show them? All? Yeah, those two. So just here, you can see there's like little hinges, see. and there's two flaps. Like what? Why would they possibly want to open it at all? I can understand if they were bigger, but that size is perfectly suited to the hole. It makes me think something has to go in and out. So, well, and also if you look at these flaps here, look like yeah. they come outwards. If we have a exactly, look. yeah. So, so it does look like possibly something could be there, and I think you might find that the loading dock actually opens from inside that area. So you might no, find that no, that's... it doesn't. The loading dock's at the back. It's behind it? the hole. Yeah. Okay. This is the front of the ship. The, um, if again, if you look, at, go back to the external image for me, Hayes, just okay. so I can show our group in that. Uh, not the external image, the um, the exoskeleton image. Okay. Um, just so how our, our group can see that, because I don't want to shoot him down in flames without proof. Um, You're a kind guy. You're a kind guy. <laughs> this one. Kelly with kindness. So you can see that in the back of the All ship, right, yeah. you see the two cylinders. 
Yeah, um, uh, yeah, because it's a lift, isn't lift. it? I forgot yeah. that it was a lift, not a yeah. ramp. And then the hole's obviously there at the front, so yeah, they're yep. almost at completely opposite ends of the ship, just so you're on the same page. Yeah. Yep. Do you I spent too much there? time looking I at this the cabin. We're in the uh, in the way. I was thinking, oh yeah, you got that, and then you got the the hole, but you've actually got the the accommodation. Mm. So while way. we're talking about the lift, we might actually show them um, the image of the. En so we we also believe this is the engineering bay as well as a cargo bay in one. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason we think this is there's an image again from the PDF. There's a few images actually. That yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a few images we, we've had to go in between. This one's been pivotal. This eco exoskeleton one because it's shown you it shows you a lot of stuff. But then you got to put it with full color images to to get the full picture. Can you show the engineering one? I think that's a great idea. True. So, as you saw in the last image, even if that, even if you could flick between every now and again, yep. this chair is That's very the clear. And, and there's the yeah, there's the lift in the background with the marines standing on it, and you got people there working on the engines. Now you can imagine it's the same engine on the other side. A little room there. Yep. Is the same. Uh, we, as... we we can't we can't see where your pointer is, man. All right. Yeah. A wrong pointer, but that little room there. Yeah. Right there. So that little yep. room. That's where the chair was. That's yep. The view from this chair. Yeah, yep. that's right. That's what I think too. Because it's the same as the cargo room is uh, all in there like before. Mm. There's engineering there, and this is the little room with the chair and the desk. So, so yeah. it, it kind of makes me think if you're into engineering, this is not going to be a highly complex, complex ship, ship no, compared no. to other engineering endeavors. Um, you know, you and, basically and looks like you're running across well. the cargo bay. That makes sense as well, because look, if you look at the exterior of a ship, Wherever two engine, wherever two main engines, they're Around basically there. tacked on the yeah. side where the cargo is. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, also, it goes with the player count of the ship, which is the maximum is nine, which is two, uh, the pilot and co-pilot. Co pilot The six turrets put you at eight, and they're one engineer. Yeah, this ship is not rated for many people. It also does not have many functions outside of those turrets. So this this is very limited ship systems, um, bare bones, you could almost say. Um, compared to other ships, which uh, might be the same size or larger. This this ship is actually rated, I think it says four people minimum. And when you look yeah, at that minimum, minimum. minimum, it would obviously be an engineer, co-pilot, pilot, and I think maybe a turret gunner. So, yeah. Two of those turrets are a remote yep. gun too, so... But uh, you're still showing yeah, people, so, you're not so, manning all the so turrets one, by then. Yeah, so well, one... Well, that probably that's what... Actually, the top question at the moment for um, the... Uh, Q&A is actually just that. How many blade modules does this ship have so I can possibly solo run this yeah. ship? And my my solo pew pew kill everything ship. This is what everyone wanted, you know? They they yep. wanted that gun ship where I go around and I win ship. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the weakness will obviously be that you can't be in the engineering bay. So once you take damage. That's right. You, you, you can't put out that small fire that keeps growing to a large thing and ultimately gets you killed because <laughs> you couldn't go out and you know stop piloting so you could get the fire extinguisher well yeah. the other question the, the question that mario put in is you know maybe uh modules for mission you know so they slot into a hole like a u.s literal ship mm -hmm. that's the possibility uh, uh, excuse me, sold? blade module can you put out that fire for me <laughs> I, I, i'm not <laughs> I, i'm not sold on the idea of the uh you know the mission module like you know fill in the hole with a block I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure it fills in it would have been nice uh, to have a modular room where the hole is potentially so we could have different yeah. things um, well that's what mario is asking you know could it be like yeah. a literal one of those literal ships you know they pull out a section put a new one depending on what it's doing could well maybe be, maybe we should uh, talk about that that for a minute because uh, we've had a couple of different speculations on what could actually go in the hole well we uh, haven't if, yet if, let's if, let's do yeah. that now yeah so execute what do you think well well one of the things that we ended up we've kind of alluded to a little bit in this stream is we think it might even be a ship and so my first instinct was like, okay, this is a patrol ship. If it, it does patrolling, like you see in movies and Star Trek and stuff, it also need to board people. So my thought was maybe it's a boarding craft, like a U-boat from World War II. So where it's, it's you... literally a donut. There was a full one and you cut out a little bit of the donut and now there's a little ship, you know? Yep. And that little, that little ship is basically boarded at the front so you can also exit at the front. And uh, this, this ship or another ship would make a hole in another ship and then this ship would drop out and 
quickly go in with Marines, got really close to the hole, opened the front, and they'll just EVA across really quickly and uh, almost like a U boat, a U boat, and um, board it. And I thought that would be really kind of cool. And also, if you look in, if you go back to that 3D model for me, and you look in the in the hole, you can actually see that it almost uh, almost like uh, when you see a ship at the wharf and they have tires to stop the the boat hitting up against the 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 wharf. Um, there's these little kind of they almost look like soft pads of pillowy goodness um, in, in the hole. You go into the hole opposite side uh, uh, so not the captain's quarters the side that's facing us yeah see those little bumps there that's what i'm talking about so that big bump would kind of be where the ship goes and you know somewhere up the top there is probably where they pile into the craft so it, it's it's not a proven concept and the more i think about it i'm a bit amari about it and also you got to look at the bottom of the hole is a lot wider than the, the top of the hole so it, it'd be a really strange craft and then our grid had a really cool idea to uh, and let him say it. About... yeah i was just saying you want to talk about that's what i was about well, to say you, you talk about well, yours well i thought possibly if it is being used that it could be for a tank you know so tank goes in the bottom they use it for land as well as there so yeah, it could be the heavy tank well, if these flaps that do actually move, it looks like it's got better clearance. Or about the same from below. Yeah. Yep. Uh, if, if those all fold down, as they probably could, these ones especially, then you could you get fit right something up. like that. Well, if they fold up... If you get yeah. right up in the hole, though, the bottom... See how it's got a thicker gap at the bottom? So it could kind of be like a narrow ship at the top and then like with a, a wider butt. I don't know. Oh, yeah, you could like a big, yeah. wide, fat base and then a cockpit yep. type thing there, you know? Yeah. Tank. Again, it, it kind of leads to that U-boat feel because you'd have this wide base and then, yeah. Mm. Totally. But I'll be honest, I'm still not sold. No, oh. I'm not sold on it either, but no. it's... Um, but I'm, it's, I'm it's obviously... It's like they, they sort of had an idea that something was done something. in this room. And I mean, look, it's, it's got these windows here. Those are mm -hmm. windows to look in and you're not seeing anything other than the other side of <laughs> nothing and two windows. It's like, well, you're supposed to go, oh, hey, Bob, how you going? A wave at him. Like, hey, no. I'll come around and see you. And he <laughs> runs one way and you run the other and then they get rid of the windows. Uh, going, that's hey, ridiculous. Bob, you There's got to be a reason those windows are there and it's to be able to yeah. observe whatever might actually see, see what's going on in that the middle purpose section. in that hole. Yeah. So there's Which... something in that hole that, that what we don't know. Hmm. Um, also, is it just back... because it looks cool? I don't go know. back to that blue image, you know the one Aragrid wanted you to pull up for the first time? Because there's a few images that are like this where the hole is full. So if you go back to that real quick, look, the yeah. hole's closed. There's something in What's there. What's going on there? There's something in there. Yeah, I'm not look. sure it is. I'm still not sure it is though. Um, if you go to the image where it's landed on the deck and you're looking straight down, you can see the back of the ship and it's got this kind of curved section and that just looks like a mirror image of that curved section so that could just be the back of the ship and it's just the artist getting that angle um there could be something in there it could be a ship it could be a tank i don't know the flaps have a flap the flaps seem closed yeah i i, I don't know Look, I... I'd, I'd love it i'd love it if it did fill up I'd, I'd love it if it was a module in there but i'm just not sure yeah, I, I think you can sell at this point we've been thinking about this way too much, but it's it's kind of interesting. I, I just, I, I like the idea of something that comes out of that hole, but I don't know if it's going to be true or not, so. Um, the other image... Um, well, you don't know, it could be like a, a giant bunker bus that just sits in the middle there and just comes out and say, like, yeah, I can do torpedoes too, and it just whoosh. Yeah. Maybe, but well, you, you know just how they didn't show the... us that, that the guy, the human torpedo video? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's him. He's in the middle in the yeah. torpedo in the center. It comes out in the middle. Just whoosh, human torpedo. Yeah. The the tank thing is really cool though. Does that mean you can dump the tank in space and it just fires and kicks itself through space? Mm, I don't think it works <laughs> like that. Who knows? Who knows? I would, I would, if it was a tank, I would have imagined it was you know. So you go and land on a planet. Mm. It's obviously got the setup for, um, you know, being the gunship, being the being the patrol boat, patrol boats. You know, they're going where the trouble is and checking everything out. You might out. be on land, yeah. You might want to drop a, an oversized rover dash tank, you know. It, I think yep. it makes sense. And, you know, it, it doesn't have to dock perfectly. It just has to be secured and then, you know, fly off and drop down. Uh, and those flaps do seem to say, you know, it, it, those things that do look like flaps look like they could close up and make it tighter and smaller 
more of a hole. The thing on the top seems to say maybe. In that image, though, <laughs> the flaps are not there. Yeah, so this, is, this is all the differences. There's all these little differences. Yeah, it's so, all there. It's just filled. Yeah. Well, you say go to the other one that was posted on Sandy's Facebook page because that's the other one that shows that the hole is filled. So, yeah. And this was this was posted um, by yeah. Sandy, and if you zoom in again, it's much the same. Where it looks like it's full. It's it's the same gig. It's like it's it's, it's nothing free space in there and you know yeah this is, this is one of the in-game asset types they this is not right, a concept that, image this is something I, and I the qa has dropped apparently oh really oh yep. all right well the Wait, thing i want to say down dropped. real quick is if this was a hole you would see the light see the points yep. of light coming from the light source yep. there would be a light source in there there is no light source in there so therefore there, the hole is full yeah that's probably the most compelling evidence that you've shown that you've yeah presented that says the whole full. This is um, not their, their concept art where artists but, have an impression of it, you know, which is maybe that's where we got the idea that it has a hole in the first place. Maybe, but that could the, just yeah. be at the point where the artist has got kind of the, the guy working on it's just filled it in because they're trying to... But it, look, the flaps are right there. The, the, the yeah. side flaps there, you can... Yeah, yeah, the, the, side flaps, the side flaps Actually, and the, you know, the vertical yeah, flaps, it's too. all there. Actually, look, if you look in really close, whatever's in the hole is now resting on the flaps. Can you see that? There's something resting on the flaps. Oh, no, the... And, I, and I even see some yellow uh, yellow caution line there on the left-hand side. Can you see that? Like the stripes? What is the... Yeah, I can. On, what on the left-hand the... side, just above the top oh, of the left flap. Caution snaps, yeah. No, no, no. No, no, no. Uh, just okay. so look at the left, the little, the little left flap. Yeah. There. Yeah, right yeah. there. Well... Little caution. See those, see those uh, side bits? That actually looks like it's hollow. Mm -hmm. So it looks like there is actually something in that hole. Almost looks like it's two wheels at the front, doesn't it? And it does look like two wheels at the front. I reckon yeah. it's... Yeah. yeah, you're right. Look, that, Maybe that's... it's a half-track or something. Yeah. Half-track. Half-track, medium tank. The Ursa is a mm -hmm. light APC. I reckon that's a tank. Um, Daniel Trusa says, I see the hammerhead to be more powerful than the Redeemer. Oh, yeah, this is absolutely. perfect timing. Timothy Weaver says the Q&A has dropped. Yeah, yep. yeah. So I said that about five minutes can ago. We, can we open the, the Q&A and we'll just go through the Q&A? Okay. Ironic timing, hey? Yeah, Let's yeah. do it. Find the link for me so I don't have to show people uh, yep. you. Yep, I'll do doing it. crazy yep. things. You find it and then Hay can put it up and then I don't have hey, to put um, do you Do your intermission, intermission noise algorithm that you were doing before. I just have a head Q&A. All right, opening it now. Here we go. Copy. And I'm putting it in uh, general. Wow. Can you go from that? Yep. Okay, general. Yeah, yep. Uh, do you want me to read it? Or read a bit of it while you're getting set up? Or And the first question is exactly what I said it was. Are the ship computers powerful enough to run all the turrets by AI, AI blades? Um, I'm just going to set myself up here so I can read and look at your beautiful faces at the same time. Uh, bear with me. Two seconds. And that one. Cool. And then Just I give me a moment while this there you uh, go. aging Australian internet catches up. Info runners. Q&A. Ages Hammerhead. Okay, I might just read from this. Yeah, go yep. for it. So it says, it depends what other computer... Oh, you go. Yeah, Sorry. Question first: Are the ship computers powerful enough to run all turrets by AI blades? It says it depends what other computer blades you want to equip and whether you upgrade the computer items. But as it stands, the plan is that you won't be able to completely convert all turrets to be controlled via AI using the default loadout. We presently uh estimate that four of six can be converted to AI as standard with any extra item tweaks. But this system is still to be implemented. That's um, surprising. Except your cookies real quick. Um, it is very surprising. I, I, I was actually expecting... Well, I'm actually kind of happy that you can't single solo the ship. For the ship yep. of its size, it seems a bit weird. Redeemer, maybe, but this... But they did say four, to, four was minimum. So that would be your pilot, two gunners, one guy, four AI, engineer. There's still yep. going to be people, though, who are going to take three people and do a pilot um, and yeah. two gunners, and they're going to be yeah. like, you know trying to mess up yeah. people's day without too much yeah. mind you as soon as they get into trouble they're up shit creek without a paddle because yeah. it's like no because they just at that point have one of their gunners 
you yeah, know, they're the gunners are running around putting fight. out fires. So they can only they can only fire from one side of the ship. So no, well, get look, on their blind side. If you got if you got like, four if you got four AI, you put them on the tail on the the arms. Mm. One turret one turret gunner at the top, one for the tail. If you're going if you're going forwards, you don't need your tail gunner. So he's your engineer. Mm. If you're running. I, know, I still so, think three real people is going to be pushing it um, a little. Oh, definitely. You know, they're, they're going to hurt, really. It's like, it's like it's, oh, manage the shields. No, put out the fire. No, oh, oh fuck, they're boarding us. Ah, ah. <laughs> it's like, AI, yeah. can you handle the borders? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> no, it doesn't work. Oh, dear. Okay, mm. let's move on to the second one. Are the large power plants sufficient to run 24 S4 laser cannons? I'm going to preempt yes. this. No. If you want to run all the guns and yes. charge your shields. I know it's going to say <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I think it's bullshit. I know what they're going to say because they're not going to give a bad answer. But I think this is going to be bullshit. Okay. Yes. Oh, uh, how much time you use ballistic cans? Yes. Yes. What, what, the, what the hell yes? This thing... The Polaris has more um, power plants than this thing, right? And it has like half the guns. But it might not have military ones. We'll have to wait and see because it oh, doesn't sure. answer. Yeah, yeah. In the answer, Polaris isn't going to have military. The default power plants are able oh, yeah. to handle the engine requirements of the default weapons. It comes equipped with very efficient military grade power plants for the, this purpose. However, running ballistic weapons does provide another avenue of pursuit in terms of maintaining fire output. So, for example, you could have two turrets that are ballistic and two turrets. Uh, sorry, two. What I get from this turrets. is it has an advantage because you can maintain fire output. What this means is you fire all the guns, you're going to run out of power, and they're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh fuck. Realistically, though, you're not going to be firing every single turret at the same time. You probably tend to be more one side of the ship. I, than I the think other. you're going to fire right. five at any one time because they that's do right. You're have not such firing all coverage. twenty-four. No, you're only firing. It, you're 20. only firing twenty only at a time. Twenty. Yeah, like <laughs> that's right. I'm sorry. And that's if you're going forward. They've sugar coated yeah. this one. This is like this is one of those big issues. Um, Look at the next question. Nice. Okay, now to the next question. What's no, the big it, hole in the middle? What, oh, what is the donut? Why is there a hole? Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Okay, could it not have been filled with something like cargo or living quarters, you'd think? Or was it just a design choice? Okay, this is interesting. I won't bullshit here. It's a design choice and there are practical reasons for it as well. Hmm. In or shipyard post on ship mass, we indicate how we derive ship masses from the geometry. The hammerhead is pretty fast for its size. Yeah, punch above its weight class, I've heard that before. Since one of its duties is to help screen and protect larger ships from the fighter attack, an increased interfill volume, even from filling in the negative space, would add mass. In law, the UE has ordered a lot of hammerheads, thousands of them, for a combat dedicated role. Adding mass for off missions, amenities wasn't deemed an effective design choice by the UE military. So that things like toilets and stuff and kitchens and yeah, it's meant to be out there for months at a time. Okay, I, I got to call bullshit on this one. I, yeah. This is like they to actually takes more mass and hull to fill in the walling that fills out that empty space than it would to just either side, and the rest could be just empty air. Yep, they have just essentially PR bullshitted this entire question. That, mm -hmm. yes, it is a useless hole with absolutely no meaning and nothing other than a design choice um, well, with no that, reasoning behind it. Their design choice could have been because I was using the argument of, hey, it reduces the mass. Um, well, they could have yeah, given, it goes faster when falling through atmosphere going downwards because it's got an air hole and it gets less it, friction it resistance it, okay, it does go yeah. faster they didn't yeah. completely lie through their yeah. ass it, haven't you watched the simpsons you know when homer puts it, all the holes it, in the car roof uh, okay. it makes it go it, faster just because just because but you know you're saying it doesn't make sense doesn't mean that the reason that it's there isn't what they envisaged yeah, uh, I think they, they, they very they, clearly visioned they wanted a hot a artists envision, yeah. not engineers envisioned. I'm afraid That's this right. is like crazy. Artists envision the holes <laughs> there because it's going to make it lighter because you don't have that mass. Oh god. Um, if if it's got some, um, how do I put this? Um, reasoning behind it, where like say there was a huge chunk taken out of one of those corridors, that you can. It's maybe it's like a 
you know, um, a backup. So because there's two corridors, if one fails, you can still get to the other side of the ship, if you know what I mean. That's the only thing I can think of as a positive to having two corridors, so to speak. No, um, they, 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 did, they could have done one corridor down the center and, let, and not filled out the center down the middle, and it would have given them, like, double the weight savings and probably just as much structural integrity. Um, the fact that they decided to do it like this, this entire argument just shows how badly they did. Oh, this looks cool. Rule of cool. Chris Roberts goes, oh, yeah, I'll stamp that. Yeah, oh, looks good. <laughs> well, you know, that, I... That's what this, this is. I can see the value of a corridor as just in being... Uh, An FPS level? You know, it's, come it's, on, it's, you've got a single I've corridor. Enough FPS <laughs> level. Look at the Star Fairer. That was yep. a disaster. Don't make your ships FPS levels. Like, what are you saying? Hang on, let, let Agrid speak. What are you saying, Agrid? About well, the boarding? Well, you've got the boarding hold at the front. Right? Mm. If, you, if you were being boarded from the front or the rear or, or whatever, uh, because of it, the, the, the ship's design, if it's just a single corridor, then it's easier to take. Whereas with two corridors, you kind of got the ability to, work, to block one, use the other. So I could see him trying to do that, but do I like the idea of just a hole for the sake of a hole? Not really. Well, then there's the glaring design choice, though, of the elevator that kind of goes down to the, uh, the, the cockpit area because that means that it would be almost easier for if people tried to board you through that airlock that they'd get into the hammerhead very quickly and take it over. Well, so, it just makes it easier for them to kill the pilot because it's, you know, hey, the yeah. glass bit down the bottom, just blow it off. Mm. I, I, I love how they, they essentially said it wasn't deemed an effective design choice by the UEE military. But I, uh, further back, it's a design choice and there are practical reasons for it as well. I, I mean... But they haven't told us what those practical design choices are. They did. They said it was. Uh, it took less mass, which is we've already ruled that out because that's a load of horseshit. This is this is a PR move. This is kind of like oh, the community didn't like or design choice. Let's make up a bunch of bullshit. I I'm sorry. I I'm not. I'm not eating any of this. This is. It stinks like a dead rat. Yeah. I'm not. I'm. All right. Call a spade I... a spade. This this stinks. They, yeah. They... I think. I think they did it for core cool reasons, or what they thought would be core cool reasons, quite mm. practically. Um, does it really... Uh, Morgan, yeah, it, I don't know. Uh, the fact is, it's not a flawed argument. It, to actually fill in the walls around that donut hole it takes more ship mass than just putting a ceiling and a roof on it. And if you just didn't fill it with anything, that'd be air. The actual mass of the ship would decrease. It's only by the formula that they're using because of the actual surface area inside a ship increases the mass, not actually the structural integrity to actually put that roof as opposed to the sidings on. So, you know, it is a completely bullshit argument that they say that if they didn't put the hole in there, that this ship would weigh more. Yeah. And I'm I, not going to believe that for a second. I'd actually agree with that, but I actually reckon we might want to ask Snake that and see what his opinion is on that, because there might be yeah. some kind of aerodynamic thing. Get an engineer to have a, have a, yeah. have a say. But I, I agree with you, actually, it makes a lot of sense, because definitely, if you look at just the walls going down alone and take mm. out the side pieces, you could almost fold that wall up and fold that wall like that, yeah. and that, there you go. All of a sudden, the two, so it's two side walls worth more of weight that... Um, yeah, it, it wasn't enough of an argument, no. Yeah, so I, in, in my think, opinion, what, it technically makes the ship heavier how it is. What what makes me, what the question I have about that then is why the flaps? Yeah, it's it, I think the like they had an idea and this is like they decided not to go with the idea of whatever was supposed to be in the hole, and now they have to cover up the idea that it might have had a purpose, but now they have to give a bullshit answer like um, yeah, it makes it go faster. Yeah, so probably <laughs> they'll. They're probably further along uh, with modeling it or something, so they don't want to go back and put rooms into it, so they're just stuck with the hole and say, hey, it's cool. So, I don't know, I don't know. Well, I guess... Let's hmm. move on to the next one. I'm, I'm done brooding on this. How are the Hammerhead's <laughs> speed and maneuvering compared to similar ships like the Polaris? I guess this will be interesting. The Hammerhead is aimed to be more nimble than the Polaris. Oh. But with ships of this type, it's all relative. 
Ships of this size aren't dogfighters, they have mobile weapon systems. The Hammerhead excels at being a mobile defense ship and keeping steady, or at least providing smooth movements to help the turrets stay trained on their targets. Does it sound like they, they, they tried to answer the question, but didn't answer the question? So the Hammerhead is only... I, I think the way, the way I read that is the Hammerhead's easier to keep its guns on point anyway, even if it doesn't move, because it's got turrets all over it. Where the Polaris doesn't, it is very forward-facing with the, the uh, torpedoes and stuff like that. So if this, if you came up behind a Polaris with this, I think you'd win. But if a Polaris came up behind on you, I think the Polaris would win. That's kind of what I took from that sentence. Paragraph. Okay. But I think it's also looking at what, like, the question about Polaris Hammerhead is a daft question anyway. You shouldn't be talking about Hammerhead versus Polaris. No. That's right. You should never be talking that. that that's a, a dumb question in itself. The question is, what's the hammerhead for? The hammerhead is for fighters and, you know, patrol, you know, low, it's low small areas. It's not Polaris, uh, it's the big stuff. And ha -ha, they fighters, they I'm going to chase you down. That's not what the ship yeah, is. They, they, they complement each other. They, to, to, to do that argument, it's a silly question. Yeah. Um, I, I hope they make the NPC AI as soon as a bunch of fighters come up to this ship, they're going to go... Just stay oh, out of distance, and you, you'll chase them forever. And yep. they just, ha 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 ha. <laughs> they'll like voice calm you. Yeah, catch well, us if you can. <laughs> yeah, and if you keep following, they'll they'll bring you to their big buddies who'll do you like a dinner. Yeah. But yeah, I um, I, I think the question asking how will they, how do they, you know, feeding the hammerhead and the Polaris? It's, it's asking the wrong question. It's... It was asking the wrong question. I agree because, as I said, they're complementary services. They're not something that normally face off against each other. Okay. Does modularity mean we'll be able to install a scanner station, extra fuel tanks, computers, med bay? Is there something we can install into the gap in the middle? Again, a gap question. I'm liking these. Yep. Please see the above answer. That. I think it's... All right. Yeah. Okay. Not a hard the point. negative space is not a hard point, and plumbing or piping is it to serve as one would impose an added cost and mass, and doesn't serve the Hammerhead's military mission profile. The Hammerhead, though, provides an excellent defense for ships that you'd want to carry scanners, fuel, or bed base, and most would want the Hammerhead's existing computer and scanning resources devoted to enhancing the performance of its weapons first and foremost. Okay, someone else break that down for me while I... Well, basically, it can't have med bays, it can't have extra scanners, it can't have those things. It is used for a support platform to defend those uh, assets that have that. And that actually fits in with the law, where even in the, even in the law, um, we're told that they took the scanner off and replaced it with a top turret, because it was missing our coverage. Mm -hmm. So that think... answer fitting with what they've said in law. I think it clearly says that this is a gunship. Like yeah, I think that's fair. It, it is a gunship. Uh, it's a gunship. That's, it was designed as a gunship. It's. We even said when it came out, this is yeah. a ship. You know, you park it next to your your endeavor. You park it next to your Orion. You park it next to your Acclaimer while they're working. And anything comes, you pepper it. If it's small, and you have a Polaris there, if it to kill it, if it's big. The person that asked this question, or the pe people that would ask this question, is the people that I feel that are those people that always want almost every ship. To be able to do everything yeah, it's um, like I, uh, I melted my connie for this hammerhead why can't it do everything the connie can yeah and i paid six fifty dollars for this yeah ideally wouldn't then every ship be exactly the same ship we'd only ever have one ship like you could just make the constellation and draw well, and there's no other ships that's it that that well, kind of argument of having everything on the ship is why i hate the idea of a crack in it yeah why the way they've sold it it does everything why have anything else yeah and well, they yeah. haven't sold it yet. I think I think it was speculated, and I think that's so the you, other thing. You, you know what I mean in terms of the way yeah. they were selling it on the on the stream. Yeah, and I, and I, and unfortunately, though, when people hear anything from CIG, they tend to hear what they want to hear and go, "Oh, it's everything." Not yeah. this is us speculating on what we this could is us, make. This it. is us speculating on what it could be. That's right. Two of the people they were talking to were designers. There was only one guy that was a designer. <laughs> is the only one I listened to. Firstly, he's probably anyway, the one that yeah. said the least during the Kraken as well. He's like, yeah, because he knew how shit. Strangely he quiet. He's like, mm, keep his mouth shut. <laughs> mm. So yeah, right. should we jump on to the next question there? Yeah, there seems to be some inconsistencies in the ship stats we have been given: mass, length, manned, unmanned turrets. Can you clarify these for us, please? The Hammerhead has six turrets, all manned. 
The confusion on the turrets came from a fairly last minute change. Oh dear. To convert two of them from unmanned to all of them being manned. Hence how there were combinations of 6 and 6 plus 2 kicking around. And this is not the first time. In other words, in other words the uh, ship matrix is for crap. Yeah, even, even when we first release a concept ship, it's still crap. Don't trust it. Yep. Development is a very real-time process, and here you get to see it, warts and all. A couple less warts. You, you know, just spend 10 minutes working that out. We talk among ourselves and tweak the designs a lot even during the design process. As you've seen from our other features, a great deal of iteration occurs even in the concept phase and continues beyond. The mass value given was from the original design brief for the ship and wasn't updated in time for the release, with the new calculations as detailed in the recent shipyard posts. We will be updating the dimensions and mass values on the ship's stats page soon, but as the ship's in active production it may change in the future. So I guess well, TLDR is the uh, ship matrix just is... Can't uh, unfortunately I'll call bullshit on that because we heard, you know, two years ago matrix will be updated soon it's going to be updated and it sat there for months not being touched and then you know they fix it up and then it sits there again for months not being touched even when they yeah. say they did say uh, the new ones meant to have this kind of live update feature but i haven't seen any live updates have you nah. guys seen any updates? i think before they go into a full concept sale they'd make sure they got the stats right take take, take like yeah, half an hour absolutely one guy absolutely and me. just it's double gonna check all the bits and pieces and the bits and bobs, you know? I have to kind of agree with that, especially when people are spending so much money. Like, um, does it almost feel like they've got, com uh, what's the word, complacent? With, like, yeah. they know this stuff's going to sell, so they just don't care? Well, you know, it, I... For this ship, for sure, yeah. I, yeah. I find I find that type of whole... It doesn't whole. matter, because we don't <laughs> know yet. Yeah, I know. But the, 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 the idea of it, you know... We, we're spending money on these ships. We still don't know what they can do or what the qualities are, and we want it. They, and so I do get to the point. They say, "Look, we want you to lock in that ship, and we want you to, and we want you to even get rid of those CCUs. And yet, that, those CCUs are really that backup for people, so they don't have to ask for a refund, but they can actually change the ship if it doesn't end up being what they thought from the description, because mm. we can't trust we can't trust the matrix. We can only trust the description, and half the time. It ends up being totally different. Morrigan stated in chat, "Would you rather they work on the Matrix or the game?" Um, I don't think it takes that much time to update it. That that's the type of question. I, I hate like, to tell you, the ship Matrix is something one person can do if they're given um, free reign to do it. In fact, they could probably get someone from the community Dis to do it. And Disco Lando, do is... Disco Lando I... did a lot of it. So in, that explains that, most of it, then, stuff. doesn't it? In, in answer to Morrigan's question, I'd like the Matrix to be up to date. Yeah, and the reason I would like the Matrix to be up to date is because it's being used to sell the ship. Yes. Any new person who comes to the game normally is not going to go to the community and say, "Hey, what's the best ship?" They're, They're going to go try to and what make the supplier says decision, you know? on the Matrix. And if the Matrix is a piece of bullshit, you're going to make wrong decisions. The first two ships I bought, Aurora and an Andromeda. Why? Because the Matrix at the time said. These two ships are by the same company and have got interchangeable parts. And I thought, awesome, that's going to do me group work and it's going to do me single work. And then I later on I found out the Matrix is a piece of bullshit. And so what was, what was the other one? You said the Aurora and the what? Aurora and the Andromeda. Same really? company. Interchangeable parts, really? Oh, wow. wow. Right, and I thought, great, that's me being a solo player. Oh, it was six less guns, group. let's go. <laughs> well, okay. You know, awesome. And then it was, no, nah, it's not going to work. Now, that's a new person going to the Matrix and checking it out. Right, so the matrix as a saw, as a store point access where people go need to be able to be able to go and make informed decisions based on what the, su the supplier is saying and the game manufacturer is saying the ship can do and, and do. I shouldn't need to go to the help desk and ask ask backers. I shouldn't need to go and ask my, my org mates. I shouldn't need to go and troll through pages and pages and pages of chat forums or go to Twitter or go to Reddit. I shouldn't need to do that, and yet that's what we have to do because the Matrix is a piece of shit. The, the ship Matrix I think, I'm be sorry. the number one authority when it yeah, comes it, to it, what ships that's are right. and what they do Absolutely. and what they and have. That's, and it's okay. not, and that, it's like the last, the that's last, right. and that, least and trustable that is source of information that really you can annoying. get. That's right, and that is the thing that pisses me off most about RSI. I'm sorry, um, RSI. I, I, yeah, I can tell you're passionate. It's really flowing out. 
<laughs> um, but I was going to say, like, I think that's an important thing when you p point out new people. Like, once you've come into this game for a while, you, you kind of forget what how daunting it was. Like, if you, if you look back to it, um, I've tried to show people, and they've told me it's taken two or three days just to get into the groove of what the game is. Yeah. And there's just, like, they've been making videos for years now, so there's conflicting information. I I've been saying for a while they need to I get, did. like, a, a player... I didn't tell you how I really felt. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. They, they need to get a, a, a player wiki working where, you know, it's got the most... So somewhere where you can put in your question almost and it picks out the keywords and goes, these could be questions other people have asked and uh, it's managed by the community and doubles are deleted. And that way we won't get things like... Do you remember when 10 from the chairman we keep in the same questions come up and on, again and again? That, that type of thing where... It's somewhere where new players can go and just ask their question and they're answered with, with links to YouTube videos and all that type of thing run by the community. I'm surprised no one's really thought of that. Maybe we should do that. It'd be, it'd be a huge effort, though. Can you imagine trying to field every question someone's had for, for Star Citizen and then keeping it updated? And oh, I think it'd be easier army. to do our own private ship matrix. <laughs> and it'll be more accurate too you know it's, yeah. it's like well, don't, I, don't, don't trust the website come here the info runners I'm, ship matrix I'm not, I'm not that's where the real stats are yeah I'm I was talking about just the strip sorry. matrix though I'm talking about every yeah. question that people have so somewhere where you can go and ask questions um it, like it is handy to be able to ask questions of like us live on things like this but you know somewhere that's just a definitive source and it's in text and you can spend your own time that's what i meant now the other thing with the the matrix and the things they sell about the ships and even the ads is they've always said that they're in law so it's also the in-law stuff and and i get that and so i'm kind of i am torn like i hate the fact that i have to go elsewhere to find the definitive facts i really really do but the fact that it's in law actually makes sense and it does when you look at it that way it changes it but how many new people look at it knowing going oh this is in law knowledge it's not as it is i think we need to move on to the next question yeah let's let, let's let's get through this uh q a and then we can are both q a's up or just the hammerhead i think it was just the hammerhead was the only one i could notice i'll double check where you guys are right, this is the tasty one so let's get through this one yeah go for it the turrets on the hammerhead look quite fragile i agree with that Will this be true yep. in-game, making its greatest strength also its greatest weakness? Uh, to an extent, this is true. There the is a heads. Sorry, there is a Q&A for the Hawk as well, so we can go through both. Yeah, that's, we can do that after this. That sounds good. Yeah, cool. To an extent, this is true. The Hammerhead's turrets are somewhat exposed. Of course, as you can see from the turret in placement design, this exposure is also what gives the Hammerhead's weapons their excellent coverage and arcs of fire. It's a trade-off you'll see in many weapon designs, in history and in the real world. In everything from tanks to warships, protected, hull down, heavily armored weapons, batteries tend to have limited arcs of fire, slower traverse, or other aspects that make them more cumbersome or unwieldy than lighter, more exposed designs. The Hammerhead is a patrol and escort ship tasked with screening larger ships from fighters and small attack craft as well as providing patrol in force primarily against non-capital ships. When arrayed against its intended targets, being able to bring multiple turrets to bear and overwhelm small targets with direct fire is the Hammerhead's preference, especially when those smaller ships are not attacking the Hammerhead. But the change, but the charge the Hammerhead's been tasked with protecting. Yeah. So when when it's uh, other ships are attacking the Endeavour, the Hammerheads are mm. in the, its, in the its Hammerhead helmet. is a defender, yeah, but a very aggressive one that believes that the best defense against small ships is a good offense. What does this mean for the attacker? You know that the Hammerhead's turrets are a relative structural weak point and might provide an entry point for boarding if attacked specifically. It might be a weakness, but we'll leave it to you to decide whether it's actually one that's easy to exploit. So that's the other thing. Say you did take off one of the side turrets, you can have that other turret wailing on your way trying to board. <laughs> so you've really, fundamentally got to take off like at least three or four turrets and, to even board. And yeah. even though those turrets are kind of separated, it's kind of like the um, Redeemer's turret, you know, it goes in, pulls away, moves separately. Uh, it does have an airlock. So even if it's blown away, you've still got an airlock there. You've still got to breach that. You've still got to breach the airlock. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, just going to uh, drink real quick. Be right back. The thing is, it, even if they are fairly exposed, you've got to get through the main ship shields first. 
before you And you've them. also got to, uh, if you're trying to take the, well, taking either side one, the only one that really gives you a chance to get in is a tail. Yeah. Every other turret is covered by the others. I, I have so, a feeling that this is a defensive ship. Um, you'd be better trying to aim for the engines. You'd be better trying to aim for the reactor and disabling this ship. The idea that you're going to try and knock out three turrets before you even deal any real damage to this ship seems like a waste of time. Um, my board, yeah. the components that are on it, and the weapons on the other turrets when you take it. Oh, absolutely. But I mean, like, so, if, if, you, if you know. you're trying to stop this from getting away, is, so um, you take out the engines first. This thing's a signal. Yep. No, it's I, 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 despite the turrets being seen as a weakness like they're talking about here, I think anyone who prioritized the turrets first is probably doing it wrong. Yeah. Yep. Next question? Next question. In the concept images with all turrets firing forward, the rear turrets are nearly hitting the front turrets. Is the hammerhead not intended to fire all turrets forward? Well... I don't think so. You don't have to. You rotate 30 degrees and you can shoot forward. But we'll go finish. What are the intended fire arcs and convergence? The hammerhead is intended to hold a position with a full 360 turret coverage on all angles, rather than able to point them all in one direction. There are systems in place to prevent the turrets from hitting the ships, so whilst they can fire all forward, it isn't an optimal solution. Recall that one of the hammerhead's chief duties is protecting other ships from attack by fighters, and small bombers. The Hammerhead is not a dogfighter. It's too large and too heavily armed for that. It's designed to provide it's a flag not puff. firepower in one direction, but flexible massed firepower in any direction while adapting to the flow of combat threats around the ship it's escorting, and when it's not escorting anything, the Hammerhead is designed not to be safe to approach from almost any angle. Yep. Question for you two. Based on that and the previous question where it was talking about how it's shot shooting at other ships rather than shooting ones that are trying to attack it, it no. makes me think this would be a really good ship with fighters. As in, if you had fighter-on-fighter fighter action and you come in and support those fighters. Yes. Um, it, it would be um, bringing your yeah, own fighter well, screen with your own fighters. That's like, you know, any other fighters are going to be doubly screwed. If, you, if you've got your fighters coming in and you send that in backing up your fighters, then yeah, your fighters... And your bombers get to their target. Someone just mentioned something about the Q&A, mid slow fighters can't get close. Did you remember that thing we were talking about, the blind spot too? We haven't talked about that yet either. There is, on, on the ship, if you kind of look at it, because the bottom, the, the only turret on the bottom is at the back, and then you've got the screen in the way, and where, where these turrets can't shoot in, there's actually a very small blind spot at the front. If you could actually get almost like directly in front of the cockpit, you can't be shot. Yeah, but, but like, you'd have to maneuver that's... so well that you, yeah, it's, it's it, almost it, impossible. It, it, the ship moves just a tiny bit, and suddenly you've got you know firing all Everything fire turrets. And it. It's it's like it, this idea of a blind spot doesn't exist. In and fact, the, the person who answered get... this question was not thinking about how these turrets all might line up to fire at a single target because it can. It, 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 you rotate the ship thirty degrees, and those front all four of the side turrets can fire forward. And it same it can fire up a little bit, and all four, four can fire forward. This this ship has an excellent convergence. It says, "Oh, but it's not meant to it." And this is them answering the question, answering a question by trying to say, "Oh, well, it's not really designed to do this." No, it is. The people who answered this question didn't think about how well these turrets are for lining up a single target with five turrets almost hundred. 95% of the time, and if they actually two of the turrets are out of thing, they just have to slightly adjust the angle. And I just thought, and I just write, you know, talk about how effective those Connie's size fours on, you know, when you line up a Connie and fire those fight size size fours at a, a little fighter or a Starfarer. Have you ever taken Starfarer out to Arena Commander when it was bugged? Um, we we brought four? five Starfarers into Arena Commander against Vandal. And they're literally like, you just get one set of hits and then they just go... Are they, sorry, were they, are they, sorry, have I, man, I, I must have just heard you guys wrong. You said there's four size fours on each one of those turrets? Yeah. The hammerhead, yeah. Each turret is four size four. Yeah. That's okay, huge. sorry, each I turret, didn't realize they were that big. Okay, Each yeah. turret is like a Connie firing at you. Yeah. I, 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 I'm sorry, but 20 guns pointed in one direction um, at size 4 has excellent range. 
that's more than a fighter. Can you, you can see what that does to a Connie or a Caterpillar? Like they showed it, you know, blowing away the Caterpillar like it was tearing it down. If you had all four, all five of those turrets all aimed in one spot, the, the Caterpillar would just break in two. This is how much firepower they've stuck on this thing. So the, but... so, so the weakest parts around the outside, so I'm, you know, you, you're talking about going, bending the ship forward 30% yep. or back 30% yeah, it, it, it means the front degrees. and the back are the strongest, right? So therefore, the weakest parts would be the top, the bottom, and the sides, yeah? No, no, but yeah, not, mu it's not the same much deal. weaker. You just rotate it. Yeah. You the can't bottom, see. The bottom I, I've actually big. looked at the turrets, and you can't, you can't, so say, say this is the turret here, right? Mm. And this is my thumb, so it's facing... This yep. is example i'm going to use my tv remote right but, so even this, then this, you've got this, four this turrets covering you yeah the sides you've still got the top and, and the bottom turret right yeah but the this turret can only rotate 180 degrees in each direction because if you actually look at it it's got like a railing so it can't actually do a full 360 degree rotation it can't do that it can't it, fire it, it back doesn't need to like this. it doesn't it need can to. only go like that or like that yeah but if you want to shoot so say this okay that's my lamp you guys can't see that so let's just say the ship's over on this side. Yeah. How? How? how um, it and, doesn't and have I'm to. On, and I'm on this side. How do? I, how does it rolling thirty degrees mean no, I no, can't no, shoot no. back that way? You don't, I can't do it. You've still got four turrets. You've got sixteen guns that can fire either side. Yeah. I mean, that's not yeah. a weak point. So what I'm saying, its weak point is there's four turrets rather than five. That's what I was trying to say. So you are actually agreeing with me. Uh, so four. So because you have the one spot, on top. The weak spot is you got. You only have four Connies firing their big size fours at you yeah, instead yeah, of five. Yeah, uh, I know. That's horrible. I don't think it's much of a weak spot in that case. Well, actually, it's not four. It, 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 what, you'd have the top, bottom, and, and the two on the side. So and, and like, four. how long is it going to take you to rotate so you get the fifth one in view again? It's like, you yeah. know, ten seconds? <laughs> no, I, well, no, I don't think... How do you get a fifth one in view on, from side on? I can't see five from side on. I can Roll. see one on top. Roll, boy. Oh, I see what you roll the whole... Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Totally. Okay. All right. Now, now I understand where you come from. So it's not thirty degrees. It's like one hundred and eighty degrees. Oh no! What is it? Ninety. No, it's a ninety degree tilt. Wow. Okay. All right. Now, now I'm with you. Now I'm with you. You might only need a forty-five degree roll tilt. on the roll on the axis rather than tilt. Yeah. Yeah. And literally, that means you'd only ever have to roll ninety degrees like this. Right. Do you always do ninety degrees? Forty-five degrees would probably be enough. Yeah. If that's a, if that's a, if that's my front, it's just shh. Yep. Hmm. That's all you need. So it's not, it's not, if that's the front, it's not going up and down to tilt, you're going... Let me see, let me see, let me see what happens. So... Mm. I, I tell you what, I'd love a foam right. skin now, that's like a hammerhead. That'd be <laughs> what, awesome. Phone, what, with a hole in it? Do you want a hole in your iPhone? No, no, no. <laughs> he, wants a, he wants a hammerhead. You, you, not several, don't you? Yeah, you, you give Chris Roberts' head in the hole, you know, just as a comedy thing, right? Next question. Right. I can't believe we haven't got through these Q&A questions yet. We just get on off on tangents, left, right, yeah. center. That was a lot to talk about. Yeah. It seems like there are a lot of quality of life features missing, like a kitchen. Oh, <gasps> damn. Oh, Great oh. question. Great question. Meeting area, mess hall, etc. Are there plans to introduce any of these? It's not particularly clearly shown on the cutaway image and fully built out on for the concept images, but we have left space for a small living quarters area built around the bunk room exterior and in between the upper lower turret entrance rooms. It's not the most luxurious ship, but then warships often aren't. The combat exactly focused mission of the Hammerhead. I know you're trying to say something. Let me finish. <laughs> Along with the size and performance considerations also yeah, lead to the Focus on combat features over comfort. That said, I'm sure there are hammerhead crews that look rather jealously upon the Polaris pool table. Don't we know it? Go yeah, on. I, um, what I was going to say really clearly, if you go back to the... Can you go to the image, the uh, external uh, cutaway one? Because it is a, I'm now 100% convinced it's where I said it was. Um, this one? So, yep. And zoom in on the four bunk beds and the room just below it. Because I believe that's a kitchen and a shower. So that no, on the right hand side. This one. No, no, no. Below the bunk beds, below is in straight down. So that room there, the long, the long room that goes along the bottom. You can see the shower, what I believe to be on the right hand side there, and I think the left hand side's the kitchen. I reckon that's just the toilets. I would be surprised. Well, they actually just said in the questions that it's attached yeah. to the bunk bed room. So well, you tell me where the other room. Tell me where the other room. Tell me around the ship. 
no, tell me where the other room is next to the bunk beds. Yeah. Well, you got, uh, you got that's little... the captain's quarters. And that's the funny, ironic thing. He, his shower's five times the size of theirs. Yeah, but it's like he wants, you know, two guys to service him on his off hours. That's what it's, yeah. it's not, there's more than one person size shower right there. You know? that, that is a, that's a, that's a huge captain. I, yeah. I'd see the two little, uh, it looks like you got uh, doors going off where the bunk beds are into enclosed rooms. At the at the end, you go across the other show side us, of that sir. wide no, corridor. Show us, show us where he's talking about. Right where, right where. Yeah. Okay, go towards the front of the ship, please. No, that's the back of the ship. Front of the ship. Stop. Go back. Go get the scrolls. Go where the bunk. Go where the bunk is. All right. You've got where the bit. See where the uh. You've got the two squares. You got the yeah. Bunks, that's empty space because you can see through it though. You can see through the floor. Oh, th those are extra speed holes. Yeah. <laughs> they look like that. They look like there are doors on on. The, I on the I day. I don't think you're right there, unfortunately. I wish you were though. I really do. I actually, do wish you were right. But and, uh, and then you've also got because that description did say and scattered around the ship. You've also got those indentations on the um, hallways. Can we go back to the question? I just want to double check that now. I'm really curious because I didn't pick up on that. So really shame is the the space small living quarters area no look it says there we have left a small space living for space. a living quarters area built around the bunk room exterior and in and... between upper lower turret entrance rooms you're correct upper lower and turret entrance rooms so that yeah i think you're right there man i think you are those two white so, spaces so it's not just a single in. it's not just a single living space it's kind of Living space here, yeah, there's a bit of space, there's a bit of space. Yeah, you know, so I think those, yeah. I think you're right, those two spaces that look empty in that image, I think they're gonna push them into there. I think you're right. No, you maybe right. lounges or, you yeah. know, whatever. Maybe even a kitchen in there. Who knows? Yeah, and so the, the real answer is, um, buy the Polaris because it's got a pool table. <laughs> also, the saying. characters too, from the, um, from yep. the, uh, the grey box fire uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. planet pool well. table you do planets on the whole table this is yeah. you know this is not a ship that's for creature comfort it is function over form that reminds me of th what's it, that's that show show third rock from the sun and they used to have all the the planets and stuff yep knocking around you can do that oh the full table sorry total tangent my bad all right let's go to the next question that's a re really good find there Algon. i didn't notice that here yeah, good job here's the ship stats page again uh, the ship stats page lists the missile launches as being Marsden 683 racks. Does this mean you can also replace these Marsden 616 or Marsden 625 racks in order to equip a small number of torpedoes instead? We aim to make them interchangeable. The blockout for them currently meets the metrics for allowing interchangeability, but things may change as the ship moves through the pipeline. For more information on torpedoes versus missiles, please check out the shipyard post, which goes into detail on how the two types can be mixed together. That wasn't. I dodged. Oh, it. no, 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 no! They did because actually, just to equip a small they number said, of torpedoes instead. Mm. They said the idea is that they'll be interchangeable, but because it's in the early concept, they can't say for sure. Mm. So at the moment, yes. Or, or, or more like uh, conveniently. Uh, uh, we reserve the right to say no at a short notice for no reason. Well, that's the other way of looking at it. You know, yeah. that's the pessimist way. I say that the realist way because that's how most ships end up. <laughs> I was being, I was trying to not be as negative. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to make amends for his rant earlier. No, it's fine. That's no, right. I'm trying to make amends. For my if rant. I was saying uh, yes, that means you could put torpedoes. This is a torpedo bed, everyone. Ah, it's like well, no, that's an optimist. In that case, it could <laughs> carry four torpedoes. Take that, Polaris. Uh, I, four I, size I, six torpedoes instead of twenty-four size nine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I knew you would get a heated discussion off this one. All right. No, no, go next for it. question, next Hayes. Question. Okay. Does the Hammerhead come with military spec components or civilian ones since it is a military ship being sold to civilians? And they answer, it comes with military grade C item stock. Nice answer. Although once these are worn out, people may find it more efficient to replace with other types of durability given the expense rarity of replacing these. God damn, I'm, I'm happy I have LTI. <laughs> um, I, I just want to go back to the last question real quick because someone just put something in chat that I think is really kind of interesting. What missiles on larger ships? Uh, I wish missiles on larger ships didn't have to fire forward. Re the constellation. It'd be really cool of this ship is if the 
turret gunners could fire missiles. They could like lock on and they, you know, they just have four, one on each corner of the ship or whatever, and they just fire off and go to the. You know, I would love that, it if that'd any be really turret cool. gunner could do it. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. Any, I, 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 the only any, one I know of is the Harbinger turret guy, and they're dumb fire though, aren't they? From memory? Uh, you have it on the um, Mustang uh, Delta as well. Ah, yes. Hmm. But, uh, what right. if you had a whole bunch of like small missile pods, you know, the big ones, and it's on every turret, it would be a missile boat, just like, release the missiles! Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, imagine imagine for ground, is... ground-based uh, operations, Scorched Earth, it's just like, you come down, and it's like, it just rains. Carpet bombs. <laughs> bomb. What were, what were they, bomb. the, clus the cluster bombs and the carpet bombs? That would be great. Yeah. Cluster bomb. Actually, that brings up the question: Are we actually going to have uh, weapons that are designed on aircrafts purely for ground combat? That's another thing that we should have speculated in our ground, ground combat. Well, they, they actually know. talked about that type of thing when they were doing the um, Gladiator. The Gladiator was actually built with the idea of A, being able to take in supplies to beleaguered units, B, being able to drop on C, torpedoes. So that was early law. So. In fact, the gladiator was actually responsible for pulling people out of uh, Virgil when being invaded by Vandal. Mm. I'm, I'm surprised they, they say it's going to be too expensive to replace with replacement military components. I mean, like, um, oh, doesn't it, that it mean... Well, they didn't, it say, they didn't say more expensive. They said that you may find it more efficient to replace them with other parts. So you might find, okay, I want to replace it with this one rather than this one. It's going to be more easy. It'll be easier to find the other ones, I imagine. But they explicitly sent Just... expense and rarity no, of replacing okay. those. So, like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> LTI, geez. Like, it's like every month so you want to get destroyed. When you by wear a yours pirates. out, that's when you dive your ship into the, into the planet, is it, Hayes? Uh, no, that's when, when you um, generously donate your scrap to a pirate. Well, you go to Endeavor <laughs> and actually do your upgrade yourself. Anyway. Go on to the next one, because this one seems really interesting it, to me. I, I found it interesting because it's like the first pro argument for LTI insurance. It's like, jeez, COG, why are you doing this? <laughs> well, it's to drive sales on the hammerhead while it's still in. Yeah, uh... yeah, that's the correct answer. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> happy to have you on the show, Algrid. <laughs> did I say that? Yes, you totally did. What is the ideal counter for a hammerhead in terms of rock, paper, scissors, and vice versa to what threat is the hammerhead an ideal counter? I like this one. Let's see what they said. A dedicated anti-capital ship such as a retaliator would be able to fight the hammerhead effectively by tackling it from outside the effective range of its guns. Polaris. Mm. The hammerhead is intended to Palliator. defend other ships from attack fighters with its merry turrets, so mass waves of small ships stand little chance against it. So... Basically, what we've said all along. Haven't they just said that um, Hammerhead versus Polaris? The Polaris is like <laughs> up here. Yeah, yeah. But, and it doesn't stand that... a chance, according to that, because apparently a Retaliator but, severely threatened that. this. You know, it's like... we've, we've said, said this that. before, man. We've said th these two ships. That I, I, we were even th figuring a Polaris against two Hammerheads. What would we? And I said, I still think the players will win. There's, but, there's um, going to be all these cut um, nice hammerhead one. owners who have thought, oh, the gunboat's going to totally wreck the Polaris. Oh, why would you but, get a Polaris? But we've also said the Polaris is better for things above it. Yeah. Yep. Where this is well, better for things below it. Yeah, I, 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 I always agree. Also go below They're it. a team. They work better together. I've always That's said right. that as yep. well. I, I, I just feel like they, they really cut down a couple of people who thought this was the bun and, gunboat and that could do and, everything. Yeah, and that's why, you know, I've got a Polaris and I've got a Hammerhead because yeah. they, hand and glove, you don't want to separate it. You actually want them working together because they cover each other's deficiencies perfectly. Yes. No, I, I agree. Next question. Yeah, next one's interesting too. Will the Hammerhead be a practical option for everyday gameplay? Can I hop in with a friend or two and an NPC crew and, for example, go hunting pirates to make a profit? Like all warships, it can be manned with a minimal human crew, but the difficulty in doing this may outweigh the returns. Depending highly on what missions you undertake, with the given example, it would be perfectly possible to achieve that scenario, but having a few more friends to help out would yield a more enjoyable experience. In other words, a less painful experience is my way I'm reading that, you know. Um, but especially, I think the engineer is going to be a pivotal role on this ship, believe it or not. I actually think mm. if you've got if you're going out with you know a couple of mates and the rest of the crew NPC, it shouldn't make that big a difference. If you've effectively got a fully crewed ship, 
uh, even I, though you're I, using NPCs, um, you may not, you know, it maybe, shouldn't, maybe it they shouldn't limit be... the NPCs so like a turret gunner is like uh, they can't put out fires because they're afraid of fire. I, I think it'll, <laughs> I think it'll be how effective the NPCs are. Like you know, well, they're stated right. how they're going to have different levels. So I think it really is going to come down to that. If, but if, if you know, the question is, can we go out and make money? You know, me and a few mates with with NPCs making up the remainder of a crew. The answer should be yes. Yeah, you, you're right. I think it should be yes, but um. I like the idea that they, they make it more difficult, uh, they make it less practical, it might even be painful uh, of well, an experience to try. Because we've got, we've got to pay our NPCs, you know, it's reducing your profit margin. Well, that, that um, only works out if uh, you have to pay NPCs more than the cut that a real player would have, because if you have real players, you still got to pay them too. Unless, the, you know, well, clearly, the clearly that's not the non for profit because, people. Know, I, I'm going out with my mates, and my mates come with me for free. That seems to be the, the rationale. Well, maybe. I, I I think that, you know, maybe people um, might choose to go out with other people who are taking on more challenging things to earn more money while they're at it, you know? as Rather than just a, a Sunday night with the hammerhead beating up some pirates where they're not, not planning to really make any money. They just want to have some fun, you know? And there's a case for both. I think if they balance it right, there's, there's always a case for both. It's people who take it very seriously and, you know, want to um, actually make some dosh at the same time, and other people who just want to go out and have some fun. I think, you know, should be able to accommodate for both. Okay. Next question. Can we expect any ramming ability? We don't condone this sort of behavior, but for some reason Aegis did provide extra internal reinforcements in the head of the ship. Oh, there you which go. Which is what that, those things we were talking about oh. earlier on. Prepare yeah, for ramming speed! Well, yep. prepare for boarding, because, you know, you're... It's confirmed. You heard it here first. <laughs> That'd be really cool if you could actually <laughs> ram another ship, make a hole ram in it, and just open straight away. It's like, oh, hello, peekaboo! Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think that should be a Before thing. Like, you know, ship is, A is bigger than ship B, and therefore should crush other ship, you know? If they make, as opposed to, like, dead bodies completely destroying starfarers when they ram into them, like, before. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're and working yes, on it. Matter. Well, now if you know you get hit by a ship and anything, and you're an EVA, now you go splat, and the ship takes no damage. So they they're getting there. So maybe they just have to translate that up to bigger ships or ships in general. Yeah, one one day the Starfarer won't blow up when it touches something. That's right. You know, like if you ram into a an Aurora with a hammerhead, you should expect that um it should turn into a, a bunch of scrap and fly by your windows, you know, and not sustain minimal damage. Minor impact on the bow. Yep. Next question has an interesting part at the end of it. Um, I'll re read the next question and I'll uh, I'll talk about it in a minute. It seems to have a short range due to its M size quantum fuel tank in relation to its L size quantum drive. Can it be refueled in space by a starfarer? Of what's course, it can be refueled in space by a starfarer. What, what a stupid question. <laughs> Interplay sorry, between that's... ships is yeah. No, I, I agree with you. You know, shame on them for doubting the starfarer. <laughs> We've but, got two uh, types of staff error, even. <laughs> I know. Anyway, interplay between ships is one of the key gameplay loops of the Star Citizen, and whilst the L Quantum Drive can get you places, the slightly smaller tank will require you to do a little more forward planning. Since we're talking specifically about the Quantum Fuel Tank and UEE Navy Fleet Operations, it's contemplated that the Hammerheads usually sticks pretty close to the big ships it's protecting. So that makes sense. What, I, what I was saying about that last sentence there, I think it lends a lot of credence to the idea when we talked about the ship first during the concert sale of it being a weapons platform. Yeah. It, it, it screams it to me now. Yeah. Well, you know, it's what it screams. Of, I actually raised the whole idea of the the short quantum fuel and the large, you know, the fuel and the the large size drives and that, and said, you know, it it got that ability where it's got the small jump size. Mm -hmm. can't, do, can't do squat in terms of jump, but it seems to have these double size uh, tanks. Um, I think it's got more tanks for regular quantum fuel than a, um, a Polaris, but it's got a smaller jump drive or mm -hmm. jump jump tank. Um, but it's, it does, it screams that it's hanging around the local area. It's not jumping off and trying to do stuff. It's it's hanging around the ships. Or sticking, yeah, exactly. It's going to stick around with the escort ships it's patrolling with. Um, it's not going to be going off by itself and doing large maneuvers. 
Yeah, um, so. I've got two things I want to ask. Our grid, now you tell me you had to leave at four o'clock. It's five past four. And we've also still got the Hawk Q&A to get, do. Do you want to drop out or do you want to, what do you want to do? I need to drop out because I've got All right. a work so engagement I've got to get to. So. No worries. We, so we we'll might go. quickly end this episode and give us a 10 minute breather in and then wrap, open up the Hawk. <laughs> yeah, might even see if we can grab Snake. No promises though. Yeah. So it'll either be me and X. Uh, one, one thing I would say is that I actually do. See, I still I think mean, that, he's executed. I do think, <laughs> I do think the uh, Hammerhead is actually a um, a Corvette. It's not a it's not a patrol ship, and Corvettes are basically what our patrol ships came. Yeah. I think our and I think our current Corvette is a frigate, and I think our frigate is a light carrier, and I think our destroyer, well, it's a cruiser. But yep. just, that's just me. So just take note, the reason we're ending the show is because Algrid's got to leave. The reason we're doing that is that way we can do a better uh, a better HUD other than just having him disappeared. So we'll be back in maybe five minutes. Yep, and just so, a, a quick rundown. Um, what do you guys think of the Q&A? Did that change how you view the uh, Hammerhead or pretty much what we expected? Yeah, so get some of your questions ready and we'll answer some questions when we come back if there are any about the Hammerhead. If not, we'll just move straight on to the Q&A for the Hawks. So five minutes, guys, go grab have a drink, have a smoke if you're one of those people, uh, and we'll see you in five minutes. So I've been Execute. This is Hayes and down below. And Algarid. Algarid. All right. Bye, everyone. See you Take soon. care. See you soon.